we're at this film fest. We, we all got these indie films at the film fest. We're trying to be cool actors. Like, everyone's just talking to me about this cartoon. I'm like, I know. <laughs> He's like, what did we do? I was like, I don't know. <laughs> With the, with the, with the, yeah. I talk too fast. Like, it's okay, it's all right, it's okay. Come back, we're here, it's okay. Obviously, don't tell anyone that I watch kids' shows. <laughs> Fire also lit, technically. Yeah, I, I had the same thought, honestly. <laughs> I personally just have to say, like, it feels, it's, it's always nice regardless when something that you've been a part of that you're really proud of that you love continues to affect people and I mean now we're getting so many people being like I grew up with it and now I'm showing my kid brothers or my kids or whatever it's like a whole thing you know and I feel like if something has that kind of staying power it's like an honor and the fact that on top honor. of that <laughs> you're, you just, just can't, can't help you can't say the word in front of God. 10 seconds he cannot <laughs> help himself uh, but you know and also the fact that now there's like different versions and retellings and like we're getting sort of like more into the story and stuff. I think, I love that. I think it's like really fun to be able to explore new sides of something and you know, it's very cool. Do what do you, yeah. do you think so? so? Yeah, it's it's so rad and so surreal. It's just, you never would have thought in 2005 or whatever when we were making the pilot, um, you would never think, oh, the flash forward 20 years and we'll be talking to a big room of people about it who are deeply invested and care about this thing that we all made together. It's uh, yeah, it's such a honor to have honor. Uh, been a part of this. Yeah. Zach, was it an honor for you also? Absolutely. Uh, no, really. Like you guys, you guys really hit it on the nose. Just like there's no way we could have known. I, we get, I get asked that question a lot. Like, did you know when you were doing it what a phenomenon it would become? No, of course not. But over time, it's become clear as to why. You know, they did just such a great job with the world building and the writing that it's. It, the show is so meaningful and it's it's just become clear as to why it has lasted and we can thank all of you for that as well. So. Yeah. It's just a phenomenal, yeah. And also it's just a phenomenal feeling like, wow. I, honor. I, it's just an honor. No, it's a phenomenal feeling. Like we're fans like you guys of so many different IPs from Star Wars to Harry Potter, so many things. And then to be in something from the ground floor and not really know, I mean, to be honest, to not really know we were going to be a part of something that was going to grow like this is, Crazy. No, the thing is, like a lot of times, actors. I mean, we're not going back watching a lot of things that we did, and it was it's phenomenal to see it happening back then. I recently have had the real great opportunity to go back and watch the series episode by episode with Janet Varney, the voice of Cora, and do the podcast Brave the Elements. And now I'm I'm now I'm like getting my PhD in Avatar. So now I know you guys. Anyone come talk to me? I know. A lot, not everything. <laughs> Lord, I, we're ready for pop quizzes. I'm ready for, for pop quizzes. I'm ready to have some in-depth discussions with anyone at any time about this stuff. Dangerous. It is true, though. Also, I feel like, especially like we were, we all grew up making it as well. Like, I mean, that was like those were years of our life where we saw each other every single week and like got together and got to hang out and like tell this story as we went. So it's kind of that thing of like, like. I have this with like, the, you know, the book Catcher in the Rye where it's like you read it when you're a teenager and you're like, yeah, anarchy. And then you read it when you're like a grown up and you're like, well, he should just sit down. You know, it's like you have like these different perspectives on it. And so I feel like at the time it felt very like we were kind of growing along with the characters as they were growing. And now I have this like more maternal like view towards it where I'm like, this is my like family. And it's like us as we like we're growing up. It's so cozy. And Zach wasn't with us. Zach was not with us. Zach no, was sadly. Not with Connecticut. He was we met with at us the in rap spirit. party. I was there in spirit, sure. Spirit? And voice. Spirit? Bridge between two worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Honor, yeah, yeah. Honor, honor it. <laughs> Speaking of that podcast, by the way, we've had three guests on this stage, guests on the podcast. May. We were just having a little wee conversation about it backstage, weren't we, Dante? Yes, we were. Get your calendar out. Let's not. <laughs> Maybe keep an eye out for that. It's obviously definitely going to happen. 100%. That's wonderful. So this is a show where whenever they could, they would get as large of groups of us together as, as possible. Zach was, was living in Connecticut, so was recording out of New York, but I think almost every session I recorded with May, and often we were in there with Dante. Um, and often we, late. Uh, you were, uh, Jack was often late. I was a college student. I was at UCLA. Late. We were recording in Burbank. It's a tough commute. I have horrible ADHD. Are we waiting for Jack best. today? <laughs> 
Jack's on his way. He's I close. I so hard. They had to, in the middle of season two, start giving me call times that were fake by fully an hour. <laughs> and I sometimes still <laughs> fuck it up. Excuse me. Excuse me. I forgot about that. Anyways, I'm an adult now. I try. I, I try it so was hard. far. You guys, Orange County to, El to Burbank, that's no joke. You that's did, hard. That's Westwood not fair. to Burbank, yeah. not In the easy. traffic hour, no. Absolutely not. Being 17, we living on my you. own for the first time. Okay, no public not. transportation. My mom really. not driving me to set like before. <laughs> When I could sleep in the car, that was <laughs> probably a the cool best. story to tell your classmates, though, being like, "Oh yeah, I'm just recording this animated series." No, they don't care. They're yeah. in college. <laughs> but then th this was legitimately like one of the first markers for me of like how special what we were making was. Was like then during like season three when people like at college parties would pull me aside and be like. Obviously, don't tell anyone that I watch kids' shows. <laughs> but, like, that sh that's just really cool, man. No, I remember I was at Sundance Film Festival one year, and I ran into Jason Isaacs in the streets. And, you know, he plays General Zhao. And it's snowing, and we see each other. He's like, hey, Dante, what's going on? And he goes, hey. And then he goes, that cartoon we did. <laughs> I go, yeah. He goes, what the, man? <laughs> We're at this film festival. We, we all got these indie films at the film festival trying to be cool actors. Like, everyone's just talking to me about this cartoon. I'm like, I know. <laughs> He's like, what did we do? I was like, I don't know. We did, like, once a week, right? Once a week. We did once Tuesdays, and I would build my whole college schedule around it, and it didn't help. Oh, my help. God, we get it. You went to college. <laughs> it was far. <laughs> to college. Only, Good. I only went to Not college. Not all of us went to college, Jack. <laughs> I didn't finish. I didn't graduate. <laughs> Come on. You didn't I went it. to a little bit of college. All right, fair enough. Uh, I checked the sum college box on, on every form. <laughs> All that matters. Um, yeah, we were recording like once a week. And then they would, um, and, and, and we would do separate ADR sessions, I remember. Because it was like such an action show, they wouldn't usually fold the ADR sessions into episode records. So we would like, so we ended up doing kind of double records for most of the show. Yeah. Um, yeah. I had, the, I had the same experience, just alone on the other part of the country. But but yeah, same thing. We had once a week, separate ADR. All the oohs and ahs were a totally separate yeah. day. Um, yeah. Those must have been fun days when you were able to just make the the noises for bending, just being like, "Wha!" Yeah. <laughs> because we all become kung fu masters <laughs> on the microphone. We are kung fu masters on the mic for sure, hundred <laughs> percent. Except I had permission to make it sound horrible at all times. <laughs> all of my ADR, if you ever go isolate the track, it's just. <laughs> In retrospect, is pretty like feels pretty wild with kids, especially that like we felt very empowered and invited into the process um, as even just kid actors is really cool. Yeah, I think even to the point the first season they had cameras shooting us as we were doing the lines. They say for the artist to kind of like animation reference, animation reference of how we were saying the lines and the emotion we were putting behind it to, to help them do something. But I think we were all inspiring each other. Doing something, I don't know exactly what they Dante were doing. Dante kills me, you guys. I, I don't know exactly what they were doing. Dante used to do this thing in the booth that would kill me so much where he'd get so worked up as Zuko that he'd get like, you know, it'd be one of those times where he'd get really angry and he'd get like lo lost in himself. And he'd literally be like, I because the D with the, with the, with the, with the. You know, I talk too fast. Like, it's okay, it's all right, it's okay. Come back, we're here, it's okay. Like he would really just like fly off into the atmosphere. Also, whatever we recorded. I got excited. There's like, there's a shared room at the, at the Nick suit space where we would record. There's a shared room and then like a single isolation booth. And even though, like usually what you would do is like two people, if they were gonna like talk over each other, you'd put one in the isolation booth. May and I would have scenes together. We would always be in, and Dante would just be. They got me in the booth, alone, guys. In an isolation booth, alone, sort of waving at us oh through the class. And I just gotta wait there when my scene's not, and I'm they just. They needed to shut that down. And we didn't have iPhones or anything back then. <laughs> and you're just on your flip phone. I, sometimes we would take pictures on our flip phone and send it to each other while we're. I'm like, I'm just in the booth, you guys. You're playing Snake. <laughs> I fell asleep a few times. Yeah, it my, was. My like it was indulgent a mess. kid actor first like big purchase was the. Gen 1 ESPN phone <laughs> that the text message sound was the da -na -na, da -na -na, and it and it it had the, it was like one of the first phones with any internet access but it was only scores um, and I was like this was my big like <laughs> so I was probably rocking the ESPN phone <laughs> was it a team specifically or was it just ESPN no 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 and it was garbage <laughs> it was just an ESPN on it. it didn't do anything I've been an actor like we all been kid actors that we grew up in the industry and I've got the good fortune to be able to write and produce and direct. Uh, my directorial debut, The Fabulous Filipino Brothers. 
Go check it out. Go if check you it out. It's it. on Hulu right now. It premiered at South by Southwest. Now it's really wonderful to write that film and, and direct it. But I get to produce. I produce a lot of films for like the Asian American Asian di diaspora. So it's very rewarding to to keep putting our stories out there and also give opportunities to the next generation. Wonderful. For me, personally, since I've left the acting game, I, I work as a cinematographer. That is my main thing now. So I work on the other side of the camera now, which is really fun to have been on both sides. It's, it's weird for me doing this because oftentimes I'm the one operating the cameras at an event like this. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, so I've done you know some a lot of like uh, branded content, that kind of video, that kind of stuff, that kind of video work, uh, some music videos, short film, things like that. Um, and it's uh, it's what I do. It's my thing. Yeah. Cool. Look out for his projects. That's right. <laughs> um, I do a lot of writing with, a, I got a writing partner, Chris Smith, and he and I do a lot of sketch comedy. Check out Chris and Jack. Yes, the best. And, and where did Chris and I meet? Oh, a little thing called college. Oh, my God. <laughs> awesome. Not even true. We met him. <laughs> Just lying fully. Um, I definitely like want to get into directing. I actually, the show that I was on, Good Girls, like we were. Thank you. I appreciate it. We were. Um, it, we were. I was literally in the middle of directing an episode um, when COVID hit, and we had to like. I was literally one day. I'd done like ten days of pre-production, and we had like one day before we were about to start principal photography, and it happened. I mean, I literally was like taking down my stuff out of the director's office like in the rain it was like it was pathetic but that was like it was really exciting to me because I think I'd always had sort of like a doubt in my brain even though like I grew up on a set but I still you're like well what, what if I can't what is it I'm scared and then I feel like when I was doing it I was like oh this feels really natural like I don't think I have to be as afraid of this so I think like that would definitely be something I would want to get into you know again Good. Thank Absolutely. you. You should, you should okay. cast us. Will you be you my cinematographer, cast, Zach? <laughs> Will you, you be my DP? I would love to. Okay, cool. Yeah, a few okay. actors here, a college guy. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, college Anybody guy. Anybody who like, two. sounds like they really are smart, like <laughs> <laughs> some college. Yeah. yeah, yeah, we'll call you. We'll call you. Yeah. Uh, have you guys uh, kept up with the newer Avatar series, and how have you felt about it in general? Do you feel like they've done a good job generally? I loved it. I mean, I, I haven't seen all of it yet. I've only seen the first episode, but I loved it. I, I was having the time of my life. I mean, again, it's like, you know, I have a very, like, I just love to welcome anyone into the world that we got to be a part of. Like, so for me, it's like, it's just exciting. I'm like, yay, more, more worlds. So I thought it was really fun and exciting. Exactly. Yeah, I was so excited for them. Uh, got to meet some of them at the premiere and, like, couldn't have been nicer kids. And I'm so excited them in this process. Yeah, I, I saw the first one and I was so excited. It was very surreal. For It was like very surreal because I'm like going like, oh, is that the line? Oh, what? But and then did you say, are you going to say that line? And that's not what the <laughs> yeah. show is. That's not what a show should be. I'm, I'm most of the way through it and it was extremely surreal. I'm, I'm not someone who tends to get emotional uh, watching movies or television. Like I saw Salt Burn and I didn't bat an eye and maybe that makes me a sociopath. <laughs> but I actually choked up a little bit watching the live action Avatar. I mean, it's obviously like I have a deep connection to the show and these characters and it got me at a few moments, not even like super emotional moments. It just like really like brought me right back and, and I think they did a fantastic job. I'm really enjoying it. Um, I can't wait to finish it. Um, and yeah, I like that they took some liberties with the storyline, they made it their own, and again, they had such huge show, uh, shoes to fill, and such lofty expectations, and I think they did a fantastic job, and I hope you guys think the same. Thank you. Magical, yeah, it's just amazing. It's just amazing to be a part of something for so long and just see it come to life. Like, we're just fans seeing, the first time you see the earth bending on the show, you're like, yes. <laughs> That opening is so great. Fire bending. Yeah. But, oh, that's what the air bending looks like. Oh, my God. Like, I'm just geeking out. It's great. And Grand Grand doing the series intro was yeah, so Yeah, that was good. so cool. I know. I it happened like, yes. so slowly, too. I was like, wait, this sounds familiar. Why does it sound familiar? And then I was like, I, I said this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if you guys could have one ability to bend, one. Fire. 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 Yeah, okay, yes, 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 yes. yes. Yeah. Are we talking about fire right now, Vito? Yeah. yeah, you can. Fire. Yeah, absolutely. It's got to be air. I want air. I mean, I would never give up waterbending. It's obviously the coolest one, and it's, like, just by far. But I think air would be so lit. You're, like, flying around, and you're, you know, doing... It's, like, that sounds so cool. I love that. Yeah. Fire. I think... Oh, nope. <laughs> fire also lit, technically. Yeah, I had the same thought, honestly. 
I muttered it. I just muttered it under my breath to Dante, and then he looked at me, so I felt like I had to say it into the mic. I didn't feel. I didn't feel good enough really to rep good. that Even joke. Better I was the second time. I really like it. I'm um, waterbending. I legitimately think healing, the like healing element of waterbending, is I in my like the thing that I think is. Okay, the thank you, non-bender. Thank you. Break joke. Any of them? Take any of them. Any of them would be I cool joke. just for a minute, just to see what it's like. Any of them. It. If you could give one to Sokka, which do you think would fit better? Uh, no, 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 legitimately, yeah, no, it's that's, too important. Yeah, that's a good I think point. he he's formed by that. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> thank you. Did we go air, or did you go? Oh, so I was gonna say, I I think yeah. I'd go earthbending. Um, earth, yeah. There we go. I see my earthbending in the front row. There it is. Um, we I, do live on Earth. We do live on Earth, so that kind of encompasses everything. So I kind of cheat. Uh, no, I, I like making things. I am a woodworker, and I think I could like use that to do things that I do. Metal bending, badass. That's true. That's true.